Well, welcome YouTube friends and family to the first edition of the fall collaboration with Charity from Gypsy Wife Life. So this collaboration is going to be a total of six videos, three from each of us, and it's gonna be about all things fall. So there will be cooking, there might even be some treats, there will be cleaning motivation, there will be a little decorating, and I might even throw in a craft or two. If you're currently a subscriber to my channel, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to go over to Charity's channel, uh, Gypsy Wife Life. I will leave a link in the description box below. If you're coming to me either as a new subscriber or from Charity's channel, a big welcome to you. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. Just a little bit about myself. My name is Kim. I do some urban type homesteading. So grow a lot of my own food, do a lot of food preservation and preparing for winter, etc. I also do a lot of crafts. I am a soap maker and a bath and body product maker. So occasionally I will have lives where um, I offer those products available to you. So again, I'm so glad you're here. So the very first video today is, what is your go-to fall comfort food? This was an easy one for me. I love lasagna. I also love cheese. I've really never met a cheese that I don't like. So my lasagna is a little bit different than the average lasagna, so I wanted to share it with you today. So the first thing that I have done, I'm having a guest for dinner. My bestie girlfriend is coming over and this will be, you'll view this out of sequence, but we are doing a live sale tonight. Um, Jasper and Kim, I'm Kim, she's Jasper, obviously. And Jasper is, she has Wolf and Stag Aesthetics, is her business. And she's just come out with a gorgeous eyeshadow palette that she created it is incredible and then her lip gloss which i love and i am in love with she's got a new color and then i'm releasing my new skincare line along with soaps and some other things so we have to eat right so i thought what a perfect opportunity to just bring you along while i make my favorite fall comfort food so let me swing you down here so the first thing i've done is I went out and harvested some fresh oregano and some fresh thyme. I'm going to be chopping that really finely and I'm going to be putting it in my sauce. I also have about half of a Vidalia onion. Now, one thing to know, I love hot and spicy food. So I have promised <laughs> Jasper after I blew her up with some Vendaloo, which is uh, a very hot, Indian dish <laughs> that I would not blow her up. So um, I thought I better not go with like white onion or even yellow onion. We will use the Vidalia sweet onion. So I'm going to take you over to the stove and I'm going to start browning off one pound and I prefer to use the sausage. Now if I was making it for me it would be the extra hot and spicy but since this has to be a little toned down and I promise no blow ups. I'm going to just be using some regular Jimmy Dean sausage and I'm also going to cook the onions. So stay tuned, I'll move over to the stove. Well now we're over at my cooktop and in the pan here, I put just a few drops of olive oil because this sausage is extremely lean. Um, if your sausage is a bit higher in fat, then you may not want to add the oil at all. And I am using what's called a meat breaker. So it's just a little pronged utensil that helps you break up the meat. And a funny story <laughs> about this, uh, for those of you who are new, I have one son, he is 36. He is an excellent, excellent cook and um, actually better than his mom, but don't tell him I said that. So when he was home for a visit, he was like, what is that? And I'm like, it's a meat breaker, you know, like when you're making cooking ground meat. And he was like, oh, really mom, you can't just like break it up with a, 
you know, spatula. And I'm like, I'm telling you, Ben, it, it really works well. Well, he now has a meat breaker and he thinks it's like the greatest thing since sliced bread. I like to use it when I make a sauce that I'm gonna add meat to because it helps you to not have the big giant pieces of meat. It breaks it up to be a lot finer. Turn that down just a little bit. So that your whole sauce is flavored or your whole dish has little pieces of meat throughout. So I'm just gonna kinda let that caramelize now. At this point, season your meat any way you would like. I am not a big salt person, so I am going to add some freshly ground black pepper. I would throw in some jalapenos, <laughs> but I promised. So, um, yeah, that is probably going to be just enough flavor. If you like to salt, you certainly can. Because there is a lot of salt in the cheese and there is salt already in the sauce, and I'm going to share with you in just a moment what sauce we're going to be using, I don't want to over salt this. The only disadvantage to the meat breaker is the meat does have a tendency to stick, so I usually have a spatula at hand just to get the pieces of meat off and make sure that everything is fully cooked. All right, so over here, we are gonna start cooking our sauce. So, I do make and can from my organic homegrown tomatoes spaghetti sauce. So I thought, no problem, I have plenty of sauce. Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> Let me dip up just a little bit. I actually only have two pints. So, thankfully, I do keep some red sauce on hand. And um, yeah, I need to get busy and make some, some more spaghetti sauce. But actually this year I canned 55 pounds of tomatoes and I cold packed them, which means it's just tomatoes. There's no liquid in it except the natural juice from the tomatoes. So I can cook that down and make my own sauce fresh each time. It is convenient to have the spaghetti sauce for sure already pre-jarred, but and I always smell to make sure it's fine. So let's put in one jar. And I think I've shared this uh, on a previous video. I was a little disappointed. And it's my own fault, it's my own sauce. Um, it's actually a little bit on the thin side. Um, not quite as chunky as I would like it to be. I'm going to allow this sauce to kind of cook down and simmer a little bit. Let me open this jar here real quick. Maybe, there we go. I actually have an under the cabinet mounted jar opener that really, if you have trouble with your hands, it is fabulous. I will link, put a link to my Amazon affiliate store in the description box below to the actual, I think it's called an easy open. It will open anything as small as a nail polish bottle up to a very wide mouth jar. Um, my son got it for me and honestly, it's been one of my favorite gifts of all times and he teased me a little bit when he bought it. He said, now next year, should I get you a walker to go with it? But he does understand, um, for those of you who are new, I have psoriatic arthritis and lupus. So um, I am a registered nurse. I retired two years ago after my fourth major spine surgery. So I'm keeping busy here on my little homestead and really focusing on wellness and trying to grow things organically and really lowering my exposure to additives, preservatives, and chemicals. So I do a lot of scratch cooking. So I'm gonna finish browning this meat. I'll be adding it to my sauce and letting that simmer. And then I will bring you back shortly to show you how I'm gonna spice up that sauce. Haven't decided yet if I need this additional um, 
pint or not. I'm thinking no, this is enough. So stay tuned. Our meat is nicely caramelized. And as you can see, even with the addition, and it, I didn't even put a teaspoonful of the olive oil, uh, there is absolutely no grease to drain off. If you're using something that's a little higher in fat, you would certainly want to drain that before you put it into your sauce. So our onions are caramelized, our meat is nicely browned and caramelized. So I don't like to just cook my meat until it's done. I like to let it sit a little bit so that it does caramelize. Let me put this pan over here. Small kitchen problem. <laughs> All right. So this is looking so yum, so yum. And if you prefer, you could add ground beef, ground turkey. Um, I'm not a fan of either. <laughs> I like, for this dish, I like the sausage. So I did go ahead, let me bring this over. And my fresh oregano and thyme, I just diced it very finely. So picked it fresh, washed it, let it dry well. Then I took all the stems off so I just have the leaves and I'm going to add about a tablespoon of each. And always you use more when it's fresh versus the dried spices from the jar. In addition, my winter garlic, I am getting a lot of use out of that. I pulled off four cloves. Let's see if that's gonna be too much or just about right. So I find the easiest way for me is just to smash the clove and it will come right out of the thin paper. So yeah, well, <laughs> it usually does, let me say that. Don't wanna get any of the paper in that. And it looks like there's a little bit right there. Okay, yeah, I think a couple cloves, let me turn this down too, it's going to be just about right. And I am leaving the cover off because I wanted to reduce the sauce a bit. Um, I'm still on the debate whether or not I should add that other pint of sauce. You know, you can, if you have a little bit left over, you can always just do some, you know, angel heart pasta or other type of pasta. Uh, it also freezes very well. So I think I'll just, I think I've talked myself into adding it for sure. And because I am using jarred sauce for a portion of this, and I did not share what I was using, um, the Classico Fire roasted tomatoes and garlic. And I love these jars because they're actually Atlas Mason jars. So I will be washing that and saving that. And guys, let me share a little something with you, not to be an alarmist because that's never my intent or role. My son works for a coral propagation uh, plant and he's worked there for many, many years. They are, building some new tanks or having some new tanks built. And these tanks are huge. I mean, they're not anything like your little aquarium, right? And they're all custom built. So the supplier has let them know, which I found this super interesting, that they've gone back and forth on measurements because, that's my hand off here. There is believe it or not, a glass shortage. So for those of you out there who can, you know, we went through the lid shortage for canning. And this year, pretty much all you could buy, I did find a lids a few times, but it's been mostly flats of jars. But since most of our glass comes from China, there is a supply issue and the prices of glass are expected to more 
then double and there will be even though it's going to be a lot more expensive it's also going to be in a much shorter supply so I'm going to tell y'all if you need glass storage containers if you're low on jars um, that ended up being about a tablespoon of garlic so I don't think that'll blow her up too bad <laughs> but if you need mixing bowls anything that is glass you might want to consider it now I also think it is going to impact the window replacement industry so you know, it's, it's always good to have knowledge about those things. I would have never known that. I haven't seen any news reports, but you know, this is firsthand experience from my son. So I'm going to add my last jar of pre-made spaghetti sauce. Then I am going to reduce it a little further and we'll start building our layered lasagna. Stay tuned. Well, our sauce has thickened up beautifully and is nice and chunky and hot. So I am going to begin to layer the lasagna. So here's how mine is different. I'm sure you've all had lasagna that is, has a lot of veg in it, like, you know, and it's good. The zucchini, etc., cetera. Um, and a lot of ricotta or even cottage cheese. And I have to tell you, that's not how I like my lasagna. I really like it to be very thick with cheese, not the light and fluffy. Although, you know, I love me some veg. That's not the way I prefer it. So the, I also wanted to share, I am using the Berea, Barilla, Barilla probably, um, oven ready lasagna. I hate having to boil the noodles. It's just, you know, an extra step. And I'm actually gonna be making this into pans. This is a nine by nine. Uh, try to figure out the best way to do it. <laughs> and laughingly, I always misspeak when I tell people what this is. So this is, I purchased these from QVC and it is the Temptations. I always wanna call it Taste Stations, which in fact is a cat treat. <laughs> so, and if, if y'all are wondering where Hanky Panky Frankie is, he is taking a nap because I'm sure he is gonna get the zoomies when it is time for our live this evening. So for those of you who are new, you may not know this, um, as you know, Charity has three ragdoll cats. My cat is a Seal Point Himalayan, but his mother looked just like Kiki. And yes, Frankie watches YouTube, it's not spoiled at all. He is in love with Kiki. So we have really enjoyed our mutual love of cats. And Frankie writes her love notes and he's even sent her a present, so. But he likes them all. All right, so I put a little bit of sauce down to start. Then I layered my noodles. And because this is not a 13 by nine pan, I, as you see, I, I broke them up. They will expand to the edge, not concerned about that. Then you wanna add more sauce. So one thing about using these oven ready, if you will, noodles is you need a lot of sauce. If you uh, leave the noodles dry and don't go completely to the edge and get them well sealed in with sauce, you can get like hard noodles and nobody likes a hard noodle. So I'm going to be using three kinds of cheese. So I'm going to be using, and guys, this is Aldi brand. It's the Happy Farms, mozzarella, the Great Value queso cheese, and then um, the Kraft shredded Parmesan. So not the powdered Parmesan, pardon me, the real cheese. So um, a little bit less of the Parmesan than the other two types because Parmesan can be quite salty and you don't want over salty lasagna, right? And then of course, loads and loads of mozzarella. So what this produces is a very cheesy and saucy lasagna. So it is extremely satisfying and filling. It's a great winter, fall warm up. Um, absolutely one of my faves. I do not make this in the summer. 
at all. So <laughs> when we decided to do a favorite fall meal, I was like, oh boy, there's gonna be some lasagna up in here because I absolutely love it. So each of these, I believe are the four, four cups, yeah, four cups. So I can tell you at the end how much I actually end up using. So it looks like the best way, yeah, these don't wanna break real evenly, but the best way to fill it up is to break that one in half. And I'm just gonna continue layering on sauce, cheese, noodles, until I fill up the two casserole dishes. Then I am going to cover it with foil and you bake it at 375 for about 25 minutes. Then you uncover it and then bake it an additional like five to 10 because you want that cheese to be nice and bubbly and um, delicious on top, right? So I'm gonna continue working here. I will bring you back to show you what it looks like before I put some foil on it. Now, it's a little soon for me to cook and that's one of the things I also like to do with these oven ready noodles. I like to let it sit a little bit covered and let those noodles soften up and they are just delicious. You would never know that you put basically raw uncooked noodles in there. It's so, so good. And guys, I tasted the sauce off camera. Oh my goodness, it is so good. Fresh herbs just make such a difference. And yeah, even if you're living in an apartment um, or you don't have garden space, that is one thing that is so easy to grow in a container are herbs. So I am very blessed to have enough land and an earth garden, but I also have a veggie pod, which is a, oh, how do I describe a veggie pod? It, it's like a portable 40 by 40 planter on a trolley on wheels. And it has a cover for it so that if you're in danger of frost or you want to extend your growing season, you can. It is so wonderful and it is chock full. I have dehydrated, more dehydrators full than I can count of herbs already this year and they're actually growing beautifully. No pesticides, no herbicides, no bugs, no problems. So I'm gonna keep working here. I will bring you back before we go into the oven. Stay tuned. So here are our final lasagnas. This is an eight by eight. This I think is nine and a half by nine and a half. I use the entire box of noodles, um, the equivalent of two quarts of sauce, <laughs> believe it or not, six cups of the large shredded cheese and about a cup of the shredded Parmesan. So lots of cheesy goodness. So I'm gonna cover these with foil and then I'm going to leave them sit for um, half an hour or so until it's time for me to start preparing dinner. One of the things I love about this dish is it's perfect if you're gonna have company because I have a dishwasher, I don't use it very often. You can get all of your pots and pans all washed up and it looks like you know, you're like the perfect hostess because there's no dirty dishes and your dishwasher isn't full. Or you could run your dishwasher if that's what you prefer. So I will bring you back to show you what the lasagna looks like at the very end. And also, if you have interest, stay on. So for this easy no-sew project, you will need some burlap ribbon. And I'm just showing you I have some buffalo plaid, some orange, and some candy corn print that I have stiffened with Mod Podge. You also need some acrylic paint, a glue gun, some various ribbons, and what I forget to show you is actually a little polyester fiber fill or stuffing for your mini pumpkins. So to start with, you'll see me putting on my pink fingers to protect them from the hot glue gun. And I am just going to apply some glue along each edge and the bottom. 
and actually place those together. Now I will tell you it's very important that you Mod Podge your burlap and allow it to dry. I tried it without and the glue just stuck through all the little holes in the burlap and it looked absolutely terrible. So I trashed that and started again. And I'm just trimming off some of the pieces of the burlap ribbon that has frayed. So now what we have is a cute little square pumpkin. And I am going to just use some regular acrylic paint. And I just chose black for maximum contrast. And then I'm wetting my paintbrush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of black and just do some detailing along the edge. So this just will give your pumpkin some definition. And oh yeah, I don't need the uh, pink fingers for painting. <laughs> and make it look a little more rustic. I like the rustic farmhouse look. And you'll see me continue to do this all the way around the pumpkin. I also draw the rib lines in the middle. And then once that paint is dried, I'm just taking some polyester fiber fill and a chopstick and pushing that down into the burlap pumpkin. And because that texture is still kind of rough, it has a tendency to grab onto the stuffing. So it does help if you have a chopstick or a butter knife or something you can use to poke it down into the corners to give it some fullness and some dimension. So once you have it kind of stuffed to where you want it, I will share, do push it down below the level of the top where you're going to be gluing it. You could select a small twig or a piece of a branch, but I'm actually going to use a cinnamon stick. And I like using the cinnamon stick because they're kind of rolled up, irregular in shape. They're the perfect color. And this does take quite a bit of the glue, not only to seal the burlap, but also to get that cinnamon stick to stick down in there. So I'm just using the little rubber spatulas that come from the Dollar Tree to protect my fingers and hands from getting burned from the hot glue and pressing it around that cinnamon stick. And here's where You'll see me start to struggle because I didn't put enough glue around the actual cinnamon stick. So if you have to touch it up a little bit, just go ahead and add a little bit more glue. And then I'm just taking some different ribbons, some that I had on hand. Uh, this is just a piece of vintage ribbon that I actually uh, purchased quite some time ago at a garage sale and it's orange and brown. Thought it looked nice with the pumpkins. I'm just taking a piece of twine and tying it in a bow around that pumpkin stem. Just a simple shoelace type bow. And if you have trouble with your ribbons wanting to slide off of that cinnamon stick because they're pretty slick. You can also add a little dab of hot glue to hold it into place. And then I decided to use a black and white polka dot ribbon for some contrast for the final piece of ribbon on the pumpkin. You could also use homespun fabric. You could use raffia. I can't use raffia on my projects because Frankie likes to chew it. So here is what the finished pumpkin looks like. Isn't it adorable? For the candy corn printed 
uh, pumpkin, I actually cut it in a little bit different shape. So I didn't want all of my pumpkins that I'm gonna place into a basket to be the exact same shape because as you know, pumpkins all look different. And I had a little oops on the side of this one. So you have to get plenty of that hot glue and really hold it. And again, I'm using the rubber finger and the spatula until it really grabs and cools enough that it will stay in place because you're gonna be poking that stuffing down inside. I also found it easier to work with small pieces of the stuffing at a time instead of trying to put one solid big piece down into the pumpkin. Just selecting a cinnamon stick and then I'm gonna glue the top shut how easy is this? And I actually like this spatula so much that I have several now because I am notorious for burning myself with a hot glue gun. For some reason, this particular burlap, which is a lot heavier than the orange, took a little bit more glue to keep it actually glued shut. But I can tell you, um, it's actually a couple weeks after the time that I made this and it has stayed sealed perfectly. A little more glue for the top. And there you have it. Is that not cute? So if your edges don't line up completely, you can simply trim those away. And again, I found another small area that wasn't quite glued shut, so I'm just touching that up as well. And there you have our adorable candy corn pumpkin. I did a similar process with the buffalo check, put them into a basket, and it's actually in my powder room or downstairs bath. A lovely little project. How delicious does this lasagna look? Mm -mm -mm. Two pans of cheesy, tomatoey, meaty goodness. So look forward to eating that garlic toast in the oven. And we are about to chow down. Well, now that you have the recipe to my favorite fall comfort meal, let me show you how to make a quick and easy craft using Dollar Tree supplies. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my favorite fall comfort meal today and drop me a comment below. What is your favorite fall comfort food? Thank you if you visited this channel from Charity's channel, the Gypsy Wife Life. And I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. So don't forget to hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button and then ring the bell to be notified of all the new videos. To my current subscribers, thank you for joining me. Don't forget to watch Charity's video. The link will be down in the description box. As always, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and I'll see y'all very soon. Take care.